Hey, how's it going? And today I just wanted to do a quick video on how to get a proper exposure with Vlog and I wanted to talk a little bit about Vlog. I apologize for the audio on this because I'm just going off the camera's microphone. Anyway, I'm new to the GH5. I'm coming from the FS7 and so I'm familiar with S-Log, very familiar with it. And in comparing Vlog to S-Log, there's S-Log 3 which actually clips at 93 IRE. It looks like uh, Vlog clips at 81. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you thought you had trouble with S-Log3, V-Log is S-Log3's nightmare little brother. What it comes down to is basically highlight management. This camera blows out the highlights so easy, you basically have no headroom to work with. So I do have a couple recommendations about the camera in general I'll throw in along the way. My first recommendation is to always shoot in 10-bit 422 for the same reason that mountain climbers climb mountains, because it's there. But the truth is it will prevent banding and give you the most latitude in editing. So I don't see any reason why you wouldn't always shoot in 10-bit 422. For success on this camera, of course you need a proper exposure, proper white balance, and of course uh, focus. There's a couple articles I'll link to in the description. I'll show you those that have good information and kind of back up what I'm telling you today, explaining today. So the challenge of Vlog, let me just get to it real fast. The first challenge is you don't want to overexpose it because you'll lose what little headroom you have. And so with Vlog, you've got eight stops under middle gray and four stops above. So you don't really have much room to play with. On S-Log, you had six stops. So you're, you're even in a worse thing. But this clipping at 81 IREs, the the real challenge. And you don't want to underexpose Vlog because it'll increase the noise that you already have. So if you shoot on in Vlog, you got to kind of wrap your mind around that you're going to have to probably do noise reduction with it. Now that's not necessarily the end of the world, it just takes more processing time. And it could be worth it in terms of the quality of the imagery that you get. So it's kind of goes back to that thing you kind of get what you you work for, not so much what you pay for, but what you work for. I guess if you could sum it up Vlog, you could say you don't have much headroom, but you've got plenty of foot room. <laughs> <laughs> to properly expose with Vlog, I, I have a couple recommendations uh, for that, and I'm going to move closer to the camera to show you those real fast. Okay, I'm uh, back here. Um, what we're looking at here right now is uh, the first recommendation I would do is that is to assign some function buttons. I won't go into how you do that. It's pretty simple. But you can assign functions to different buttons. So one function I would recommend that you do is the waveform. So you can just get to it right away. But honestly, this waveform is so small. I don't know. You have to have really big eyes uh, to, to see it. And so it kind of gives you a ballpark idea. But it's like a lot of these cameras. They say it has a waveform monitor. But it's so small on the camera that you really got to look. And, and if you're busy, it, it might not be the best. Plus they got soaps. I pressed the wrong button. So I would put that on a just to give you kind of a ballpark of where you are with things. For instance, uh, let me turn it back on for a second. You can already see from this scene. Well, you can see we're already clipping on oops, clipping on the edges there. So on the right and left, you can see those those high marks. So we're already clipped out here inside we're inside a kitchen and we're already blowing out the highlights so you'll see what i mean about highlight management in it toward the end so anyway we'll just come back to this in a, in a little bit so what i recommend to get your exposure is the zebras thank god this has zebras on it and that's how you would get exposure on the fs7 as well so i assigned a function button for that and that way you can just access it so my recommendation is for zebra one I don't recommend exposing for 18 middle gray just because gray, that color is not that common. And it's more common to find something that's that's white or about a little off white, maybe 90% white. So what I've got in front of me is I got two 90% white cards. I would expose to 90% white as opposed to middle gray just because there's a lot more white things. You may find yourself in a situation where you need a white card and you can't find anything. So you could even use a piece of paper then to kind of get you by although you might have to adjust a little bit, a couple IRE for that. But these are two 90% white cards. The back of the last light card is actually 90% white. So what I would do is recommend setting your zebras to a function button, and then you can just get to them really fast. So that zebra's off. This is zebra one, I put it 60%, which would be exposing to 90% white, which would be the same as exposing middle gray to 42. I think it's 42. So they recommend for V-Log, you, yeah, for V-Log, they recommend that you expose middle gray to 42% and 90% white to 61%. Unfortunately, on the Zebras, you can only, only do it in five-point increments, so 60 is close enough. So you could actually go just a tad 
above that. Of course, anything that's 60, so what do I have it on right now? I have it on zebras at 80. So the zebra 2 is at 80, and that's so that you can see where it's going to be clipping. So this camera clips at 80 IRE, which is, you basically have no headroom as far as I'm concerned. Very, very little headroom. So you can see if I take a picture here, I'm already blowing out the windows and a little bit there on the left side out the sliding glass door over there. So I've already, already know that by looking at that, that that's going to clip. And that's confirmed by, if I press my function button and I look at the waveform monitor, I can see I'm already blown out the windows very easily. It's not even bright out the windows and I've, and I've blown them out. So that, one of the challenges with this camera, not to say that this isn't the greatest camera ever, but which I actually think it is the greatest camera. So we go back here. How do we get rid of this? I want to get rid of that. Oh, click it again. Okay, so what I did is I set the zebras just to summarize. I set zebra 1 to 60, which it would be exposing to 90% white. I spent zebra 2 to 80%, which is the clipping point. So then I can just point the camera at the scene and not see where I'm going to be blowing out at. It's just on the sides right now is where I'm going to be blowing out, but not on my primary subject. And then, I, of course, you can turn them off if it's annoying you. That's what I would use to get to your proper exposure levels. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, record this. I already have this in focused and white balanced. So I'll just record a little bit of this footage and then I'll bring it in and show you what it looks like. And it should look fine except for the windows are going to be blown out. So the last thing I want to talk about with regard to, to dealing with V-Log then, since you have no headroom and plenty of foot room, is that one thing you might want to do is get like a false color app. Something like this. There's a centimeter or two if I can put it here. Let me turn this off now. I'll show you this. It allows you to, a false color meter like if you can see that. This is the Cine Meter 2. It's an app. I think it's only $25. It's, it's worth it, I think. You can survey a scene and set and see right away where your highlights are going to, the problem's going to come from. So now let me just finish up by talking about highlight management. Oh, I was going to show you, you have your zebras set. So let me show you how you would actually do this on, on the camera. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I had to switch uh, back to this position here. Now I just wanted to show you the, the setup that I got here. So I've got the mannequin's head, and then I've got two 90% white cards, and then now I have the zebra set on the camera to zebra 1 at 60, which will expose for 90% white, and then I also have zebra 2 set to 80% so I can see where I'm going to have highlight problems, where the highlights are going to clip and blow out. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to move again closer to the camera and show you how you would get your proper exposure. Okay, now to get the proper exposure, what I do is I press my function button. I have the zebra 60. And what I notice about this is at 60 IRE, the zebras kick in and they stay on. So you can see from this picture, hopefully, that the, the windows are already blowing out because they're over 60 IRE. They're over 80, actually. So, so I already know those are clipping, but I, I need these cards to be at 60. So what I do for that is I'm just going to have to bring the aperture down on the camera. Yeah, see, I'm not even getting, uh, I'm not even with the lighting in here, I'm not even hitting 60 IRE yet on that. So I actually need more light believe it or not, which is interesting. I do have some light here. This might mess up the white balance a little bit though, because this isn't the same color. I think I, because I have clouds coming in and out. All right, that should do it. So let me adjust the, see now, I had to bring in more light, I'm actually inside. So now you see I'm at now I've got plenty of light. So what you want to do is ring it till the zebras just kick in. So right there, there's just a little bit of zebras on this lower card. And I, can, I want, but I'm trying to go for the bigger card. So right there is when the zebras kick in. So that would, should give me a proper exposure. And if I wanted to double kind of check it, I could press bring in the waveform monitor and kind of see where I'm at there with the white card. So the white card's going to be that big thing in the middle. And that's why I say it's hard to read this line, but it should be right around 60 60 percent. But these lines are so hard to see. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'd say I'm right, right at 60. Maybe just a hair. It's really hard to see from using that uh, waveform monitor. So anyway, I'll turn that off. You know, I might even have a little latitude and I could even go up a hair more like that. That's what it looked like on the from the waveform monitor. So I actually would go all the way up, maybe, right there. And I'd say that's going to put me, let me double check this waveform. Yeah, that looks to be right about, right on the money there. Okay, so then that's how you would do it. Now, I've got my exposure set. Let me pull back here. 
Yeah, so I, I would have to redo my... There we go. Okay. With my white balance set, I would just, I can just turn on to my subject now and know that I've got, I'm going to have a, a pretty good shot there. So let me turn record on. Although that does look overly bright just looking at the screen. So I should probably have the, the assist on for that. And we'll see what this ends up looking like. I don't know. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was this highlight management issue. It's a big concern, so it boils down to this camera doesn't handle highlights well at all. And you have to be on the lookout for highlights and how you have to manage them. And that part of it really comes down to what I call physical highlight management. I would get a false color app, scan the scene you want to shoot, and see where your highlights are. And then you're going to have to do your options include this. So highlights are going to include anything like the sky, lights, fires, windows, white objects, etc. But those are the main things it's going to be. And then the questions really are this is can you move or turn down the highlight? Can you block or scrim it? Can you change the location to a shady spot or away from the highlight? Can you change the time of shooting? Can you use a graduated ND filter? Can you recompose the shot to avoid the highlights, get closer, a tighter angle? Or do you just want to let it go and let it blow? It's really up to you. But with this camera, the bottom line is you're going to have to do physical highlight management. So you're going to have to figure out some way to deal with the highlights in your scene, either blocking them off, shading them, moving your location, changing the time, whatever you got to do to get rid of the highlights. Or if you're okay with clipped highlights, then let it go and let it blow. So like on this scene right here, how would I do what I'm saying for you to do? Well, my one option would be to tighten up the shot. So I would just simply, to deal with this, I would just move the camera physically closer to her. I would just move the camera closer and get a tighter shot. And then what I would do is close the curtains. So let me show you what that would look like. Let me turn that light off. So this is how I would do it real quick, and that'll be a wrap for this video. Okay, so I, I just wanted to show you how I dealt with this. As I, uh, to get rid of the highlights, I moved the camera closer, and I closed the curtain. And uh, I'll show you what this shot looks like. And I do have her properly exposed at uh, 61 IRE for 90% white. So hopefully this should look okay in when we preview it on the video when I go to edit it. Of course, it's a lot more work, but you know, the reality is you've got an amazing camera that's only $1,500 right now and you can shoot cinematic quality footage. The downside for that, the reason you're paying $1,500 for the camera and not $10,000 is that it doesn't manage highlights very well or at all, you can almost say. So it forces you as a creative person that you are and the problem solver that you are to figure out how to physically manage those highlights then. And you should be aware of your highlights anyway, you know, whether you want them, maybe there's situations that you're shooting where you want that blown out ethereal look. So it could actually work creatively for you if you want. But the reality is that you've got to manage your highlights, physically manage your highlights with this vlog, version of vlog in the GH5. That's my conclusion. And to use zebras to get your exposure. The waveform monitor is way too small. And to expose to 90% white instead of 18% gray because you'll find more things that are off-white or 90% white than you're gonna find things that are middle gray. And if you don't have a middle gray card with you, what are you gonna do? And then just put your zebra two on 80% so that you can be aware if you don't have a false color app that you can at least be aware of where those highlights are and what you're going to do with them. What, what are you going to do with them? And you should be managing your lighting anyway. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much. I appreciate everyone who watches these videos. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.